In a previous video, we explored types of data. In this video, we'll be exploring representations of data. As mentioned previously, data is raw information, that is, a collection of facts. Before it can have meaning, data must be processed. When data is processed, organised, structured and presented, it becomes information. Information is context dependent, and so it is important to consider the audience and how that data is presented. We quite like this infographic, as it captures what we're talking about. The infographic features an assortment of LEGO in different colours and sizes. The LEGO is sorted by the attribute, which is colour. The data then becomes arranged, and lastly, it is visually presented. Presentation is important, and if you're familiar with infographics, they display data in many different ways. Some are quite eye-catching and provide a great example for classroom exploration and analysis. Essentially, software applications are created to process data. This is also referred to as data processing. Software accepts the data as input and produces information as output. We'll cover this later on in another module. One example might be a weather application. This site takes in data about the weather through measurements, analyzes it, and then produces visual information so that I'm able to make decisions about what to wear for the week. Some examples we've presented here have children matching numbers of objects to values, presenting numbers in different ways, sorting blocks and objects by attribute. Young children can also develop and practice presenting information in the form of pictures. This could be developed through drawing the weather or selecting appropriate images. When reading a storybook, students could identify what is happening in the, in the picture or make predictions what might happen next. Students could also be provided with a sentence and have to draw a picture to match what is described in that sentence. In science, children can draw a picture of their experiments as a way of describing what has just happened. Students of all ages can explore different types of graphs and ways of presenting information in the early years, some examples are bar graphs, labelling, numbers and pictographs. One storybook that could be used to introduce sorting and organising objects could be Dave's Down to Earth Rock Shop. Two children find that Dave has been organising and sorting his rocks by size and colour, and then they go ahead and organise them by hardness. After reading a story like this, children could be asked what other things could we sort and organise. Scientists often use classification systems as a way to organise and sort families. We have used this as an example representing insects. Can you think of any other examples? In the learning objectives for bands 3 to 4, children begin to experiment with presenting the same data in different ways. How many ways can you present the number 9? If you have a moment, pause your video and have a try brainstorming. How many ways did you think of? These are some of the suggestions that we came up with, but there are many different ways to present data, from words to numerals to different languages and visual images. In these years, children can practice representing data and thinking about the way that data is presented. What is the easiest way to present this information and does it suit the context? Here are some great examples that could be used to display in your classroom. We can see students presenting a number as many different ways that they can think of, as we just did. And we can also see students starting to develop different ways of thinking about manipulating numbers. The base 10 system and using these blocks is one way to have students recognise that an object can represent another set of objects. For example, the hundreds block represents 10 individual tens blocks. We can also see websites representing data in different ways. Let's have a look. If we enter in the number 9 into Wolfram Alpha, it gives us some examples of how 9 is represented in mathematics. And we can see here the visual representation, the shape with 9 sides, binary, which we'll come back to later, the prime factorization, and some other text as well. This is a great resource for getting students to recognise that numbers can be presented in different ways. Data representation is not limited to numbers. There are some great software out there that allow you to explore the analysis of text 
such as Word, Wordle or Taxedo. We have some ideas of how to use this software on our page. Here's one example where we've taken the Digital Technologies Curriculum document and we've put it into Wordle. It's presented the text uh, appropriate to size, so we've got the larger words are more frequently occurring. Obviously digital and information and processes and thinking have occurred more frequently in the Digital Technologies Curriculum. Students could do this to their own stories that they've typed up, or they could cut and paste other stories such as the three little pigs or Goldilocks and the three bears, and then analyse what are the most frequently occurring words in those stories and why are they occurring? What are some other ideas that you can think of for analysing text? Data can also be represented in the form of codes, like barcodes or QR codes, or through sound. Here I've presented my name as a QR code or as a wavelength, which I inserted using a sound. I can also use text converters like this one, which we found for you. If I just click on it. Uh, it's by Computer Hope. And what I can do is I can enter in some text here. Let's put, let's keep with the theme of, that I've previously used and we'll put in my name. If we submit this text, it tells us a whole different lot of ways to represent my name in different code. There are some great ways you could use these codes in your own classes. Can you think of any ideas? Share them in the discussion forum. We'd love to hear your ideas. Besides small group and individual exploration of data, there are also some activities where students can collect data as a class and present it visually. We love these examples found on Pinterest. One where a teacher used a table to collect data about students' predictions in science. Also, this other example presents students' families as a beautiful collage. It's important to ask questions about what, we, what the presented information tells you. This class made some inferences, one being that no family was the same. We'll be exploring pattern identification more closely in the next video. We look forward to it.